Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for choosing to tune in this afternoon's session. It's lovely to see um, lots of familiar, uh, not quite faces, but familiar names out there. So thank you for choosing to join the session. Um, and I hope you're going to find it useful. It definitely is going to be quite an action packed one, um, because I realised as I was presenting this that, um, that actually there's an awful lot to say about arthritis support. And so I'm going to um, try and cram it into half an hour, but apologies if I go a little bit over. So the plan for the session is to start off by explaining what we mean by the term arthritis, obviously specifically thinking of our cats, and then how can carers spot signs of arthritis in cats? What are some of the difficulties that we have with spotting arthritis in cats? And move on very importantly to the good news, which is what can we do to help cats affected by arthritis? And the good news is that there is a ton of things that we can do um, and in all sorts of different directions that can be extremely effective. So this shouldn't be a condition that you are fearful about your cat developing. And in fact, as you'll see very quickly, it is an incredibly uh, common problem in older cats. But osteoarthritis is the term that we use a lot in veterinary medicine to talk about the situation where cats have a degenerative joint disease. And the, the word osteoarthritis means that it's involving what we call synovial joints. And these are joints like our elbows and our hips uh, and our knees and uh, all our fingers and all our toes and the same, same for our cats as well. And in cats, uh, for the most part, actually, this is extremely common as what I would call an age related um, degenerative process. So it's obviously made worse if you've had an injury or another problem with a joint, a joint infection, for example. Um, but those uh, don't need to be present for a cat to go on to develop arthritis. And in fact, most cats that do develop arthritis, they develop it in multiple joints. So it's, it's not usually just one joint. Um, it's often a, a combination of joints. And one of the things that um, really marks it out in my mind is the fact that whilst it is incredibly common, it actually is, is very much under diagnosed and under treated in our cats at the moment. And the reasons for that really uh, are a whole range of things, including um, that cats are very, very clever. And if they are in pain from multiple joints, which is the end result of this uh, joint disease, um, then they're very good at adapting their life to deal with that pain, that disability. So unlike a dog, where we take a dog for a walk, you know, typically several times a day, the cats obviously are free living creatures. They make up their own minds to do what they want, when they want. And if they're feeling uncomfortable or sore, they're just going to do less of it and they're going to take life more slowly, which is very sensible. But because these changes often happen quite gradually, it's very difficult if you're caring for a cat with arthritis to actually spot the point where this has become a problem um, unless it's become extremely uh, severe indeed. And a number of studies have shown that um, it's actually very common for there to be what we call radiographic evidence of, of joint disease in cats. And uh, a number of surveys have shown that more than 90% of cats aged 12 years and over have changes on x-rays consistent with osteoarthritis. So it is incredibly common to get these bony changes doesn't necessarily mean that more than 90% of cats in this age bracket need painkillers, which would be one of the, the treatments of severe arthritis, but it is telling us that it is incredibly common. And therefore it's very likely if you do care for one or more older cats, that they will have some uh, impaired mobility because of osteoarthritis at some point as they get older. But there are a lot of challenges to diagnosis. Um, as I've already said, cats are very good at adjusting their lifestyle. So if they are finding it hard work to go upstairs and downstairs, well, they just are going to stay downstairs more often. Uh, and if it's hard to jump onto the bed, they're just going to stop jumping on the bed. So all, the, all of these things can make it very difficult for us as carers to understand. So I'm going to run through some of the things that you can use uh, to look uh, for signs of arthritis in your cats, what sort of clues you might see. 
and a lot of these do relate to activities involving movement so that's not going to be a surprise maybe but it's just to look at your cat perhaps in a, a different way perhaps a little bit more of a critical way than you might do normally from time to time particularly if they are a senior or super senior cat so if they're aged 11 years and over actually look at them as they move around and see if there is any hesitation, any reduced enthusiasm or reduced ability to do some of the things that they would normally be doing in their uh, active day. So you may or may not have stairs in your house, but if you do have stairs and your cat as a young cat normally went up and down those stairs, then that's one of the things that if you get the opportunity to watch your cat using the stairs can you see are they taking it more slowly are they hesitating do they seem to be finding it any more difficult uh, or is there anything else that makes you think that perhaps this is a struggle similarly using the cat flap jumping onto surfaces like chairs uh, beds sofas all those sorts of things uh, playing um, lots of cats do enjoy playing but um, if that if they're in discomfort then of course that might become more painful and, and therefore not happen uh, climbing trees using uh, scratching posts these are just some other examples of things that might change with mobility problems in your cats and just a, a couple of videos I, I hope that these will, will play smoothly for you but um, on the right hand side, we've got Sooty looking a little bit just uh, uneven on his paws, a little bit lame, uh, whereas Gandalf or another elderly cat just um, very sprightly leaping on top of the wall. Um, and so one of the things that can be really useful um, for me as a clinician is if I have video evidence if you like to consult and particularly at the moment in in the coronavirus situation where we're needing to be socially distanced with each other and with our our clients having data provided to us electronically is incredibly helpful so if you're not sure about your cat's mobility um, taking a video can be really helpful and you're looking for, for example, the, the cat, uh, you might describe it as looking less feline, actually, because to be a feline is to be very smooth and graceful. Um, but uh, a cat with arthritis may have more of a stiff and stilted gait. May, life just may look much, much more difficult. They may have a limp. Um, and I apologize, just spotting the typo on a slide. The hissing is obviously what I was uh, meaning to write. They're not hising. Um, but signs of pain when stroking joints might be something else you find. So, for example, I have had uh, carers tell me, well, my cat, if I pick them up in a certain way and I'm not really supporting them, they, they will cry out. Or if I stroke them in a certain place, it's obviously painful for them. Just being more grumpy as well would be it would be another potential uh, sign of discomfort. So uh, if your cat previously, you know, very good natured, very happy with you is starting to be a little bit tetchy, grumpy with you, grumpy with other cats or other uh, pets in the household, other people in the household, then pain might be a reason why. So always consider that for behavior changes. Being less active than previously. Well, that again, it tends to happen very gradually. But if you do look back over the last let's say six months and think gosh my cat really has slowed down in these last few months that would be another time to talk to your vet about the possibility of arthritis if, if the cat's an older cat in particular. If if your cat's choosing to sleep in a different place, that can be because of discomfort. So again, many cats like being at a height and they they naturally are very good at jumping, as you'll know. Um, but if jumping up onto the bed or the chair um, starts to become painful, then you may notice your cat with arthritis is now tending to sleep on the carpet at floor level, uh, perhaps finding a mat to sit on rather than a high, a high surface. And again, these changes, because they can happen gradually, can be hard to spot but uh, perhaps bear that in mind looking at your cat. Having toileting accidents can be another sign of arthritis, particularly if there's not a litter box available, which is why I put in the cat flap picture. But also it brings me on to cat flaps, which can uh, often they're, they're, they're quite small um, and they do involve a little bit of a wriggle to get out. And, and uh, if you're a bit uncomfortable, really can be quite um, off putting to have to go through your cat flap. And you may find that, again, your older cat quite likes to sit by the door and kindly request politely request for you to open the door um, and you may find similarly if you don't offer a litter box that uh, that you may see some toileting accidents as a consequence of your cat just saying it's just too sore for me to go through the cat flap and get outside in time 
Having a poor coat, um, reduced grooming um, can be a feature of pain um, and also can involve pain in certain places. So again, if your cat has sore hips, maybe they will stop grooming over that part of the body and they may develop little fur mats and that can be a clue that this is a, a sore place. So um, there are ways we can help with grooming and there are lots of soft brushes that are useful, but of course we just need to be gentle and, and careful not to, um, to, to to hurt our cats inadvertently if they are arthritic and sore in that way. And if you notice any other change in your cat really that, uh, that perhaps doesn't fit with their normal behaviour, then always consider the possibility of pain as a reason why. So even things like appetite, you might not think, well, appetite is likely to be very much affected by a condition like arthritis. But if the arthritis is very painful, um, then that actually can affect appetite. It can affect the cat's ability to reach the food bowl, but it also can make the cat just feel, well, I really know I just... I, I, I can't face doing anything at the moment, I'm feeling too sore. So if you do notice any changes, definitely mention them to your vets. But a key thing really not to think you need to look for is a limp, lameness associated with arthritis. Um, because it tends to involve more than one leg, it's harder to spot. It's not a, a cat holding up a sore leg, as in this picture. This cat actually had a, a dislocated toe, um, a traumatic incident that had caused the lameness. So very handily was saying, this is the sore paw, please put this one right for me. But cats with arthritis tend to be sore on all of their four legs, so they're, they're not going to hold a paw up and the lameness can be harder to see because they're essentially lame on multiple limbs. So if you're worried, of course, the key thing is really to speak to your vets and ask for their advice. And uh, anytime anyone has a worry, I would say trust your what I would call your maternal instinct towards your cat. If you feel there's something not right, um, then probably there is something that is not right and it needs attention. So don't hesitate to get in touch with your vet clinic. From a vet perspective, diagnosis of arthritis is actually very challenging as well because, of course, we can't speak to our patients and say, well, you know, what's wrong? Where does it hurt? That's the first issue. It's also quite hard to assess mobility in feline patients, as you might imagine. So with a dog, if it comes in with a history of, of a limp or being not wanting to go for walks, um, we might ask the, the uh, client to walk the dog up and down the corridor or trot up and down the car park. Can't do that with our cats for obvious reasons so uh, we are dependent on getting a lot of information from you and the careful careful uh, what we call the history the question asking is really essential to build up that body of evidence that leads us to think that mobility uh, may be a problem in this in this particular patient obviously examining the cat um, it can also add extra clues but again that can be quite challenging in cats with arthritis because if they're not happy at being uh, at the surgery if they're stressed and fearful um, then that, that can make them difficult to examine they may not show signs of pain because it's not in their nature to really make it very obvious to anyone else that they're in any way vulnerable um, and equally as well we can get false positives a cat that doesn't want to be examined because it's stressed we might think well is this cat actually sore so it can be difficult um, ultimately x-rays are needed to confirm the diagnosis but because this is so common as a, a finding in older cats anyway um, we wouldn't normally um, push for uh, x-rays as being essential in terms of diagnosis um, unless we, we felt that we actually needed that information. If we feel we've got enough from the history and the examination um, and the patient's age for example then, then often we will make a presumptive diagnosis of osteoarthritis because to do x-rays properly would need to sedate the cat and that of course is not always something that everyone wants to do. So in terms of the questioning, this um, may not be very legible at this magnification, depending on what screen you're viewing this on. But this is um, an extract of a questionnaire that's in the VET section of the free downloads on the website, vetprofessionals.com. Look under helpful info, free downloads, and then under the VET section for cats, you'll see there is a health questionnaire for older cats. And it asks uh, questions such as those I've already mentioned. Does your cat have any change in their ability or enthusiasm to go up and or down the stairs, use a cat flap, jump onto the bed, etc., etc. Have you noticed a stiff or stilted gait? Have you noticed a limp, vocalizing in pain? 
all those things we've already mentioned but basically formalizes it into a questionnaire that hopefully is quite easy to go down and say well no 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 everything's fine or oh actually uh, I think there is something here that that's uh, not quite right so hopefully that's a useful guide as to what to look out for as well and often I think it, it's actually the case that understanding what we look for as evidence of arthritis helps you as carers to then in the future look out for those changes you now know what to look out for and the cat for example if it if it loved uh, being on the kitchen windowsill watching the postman come in the morning and you've now spotted oh my cat doesn't do that anymore or they only do it if I put a chair next to the window and they jump on the chair first then you can see mobility uh, in the cat has been affected Meanwhile, back at the clinic, we will always try and observe our cats moving around. But as I've already mentioned, that can be quite difficult. So there's essentially there's no way you can force a cat to move in a consulting room if they don't want to. But with a little bit of time and a nice and quiet clinic, hopefully the cat will actually move around and give you an idea of their mobility. And uh, a clinic that, that uh, I'm associated with in Scotland called Ingalls Vets, they several years ago did something which I think was um, probably a world first um, certainly it's been adopted by other clinics since um, and this was to um, in their consulting room which uh, they have cat only consulting rooms which is lovely as well um, but to build some steps into the side of the wall next to the area where the cats were weighed um, and then the idea was that hopefully we would be able to observe the cats coming down the steps and get a little bit of mobility assessment in the consulting room and whilst I was a little bit skeptical initially as to how effective this would be I can tell you it actually works very well particularly in elderly cats young cats that come in if they're coming in for a vaccine for example will as you won't be surprised to hear often just leap off the top of the work surface onto the floor they're quite happy to do that but the older cats uh, they look at the steps and think oh well, that's very sensible I think I'll, I'll just choose the steps to come down so I hope the video will will play uh, well. I've got three videos here. Peppa's quite mobile and she sort of comes down reasonably happily. Um, actually, if you see as well, like she did, cats shaking their front paw, that's because they'd had a blood pressure assessment first. We always do that as the first part of the assessment. And the ultrasound gel on the paw, cats quite often will just shake their paws. It's like, oh get this stuff off me so that was the, the shaking paw but her mobility quite good whereas cookie much more slow to come down much more hesitant really thinking about it and also looking a little bit sensitive putting weight on her back legs at times so it's just a little bit more uh, of a struggle now some of that slowness could be well I'm a bit anxious I'm at the vet clinic but it also could be because of reduced mobility and the important thing is really the steps allow us to have that sort of discussion with with the owner and see whether they've noticed any problems at home. And then the last video I have is the most dramatic uh, example I've got of a mobility impaired cat where you can see Boudica really keen to come down the stairs. We were almost holding her back at the top. She really couldn't wait to go for it. But you can see makes it look quite difficult and eventually does give up. It's just too, too much like hard work, unfortunately. So the steps, the mobility assessment can definitely help. Uh, owner videos definitely also can help. The rest of the examination, the sorts of clues that we look for specifically would include thickening, pain and reduced mobility of joints so actually feeling the, the individual joints but often we find with these older cats that particularly if they're less active um, that their nails are very overgrown and that's a, that is a common old cat issue in general but if they have arthritis and they're not scratching their scratching post and they're not as active then that tends to be more dramatic and some examples of here of thickened nails and, and the top right picture with the nail actually growing in into the foot pad which of course can be very painful as well. To confirm a diagnosis, as I mentioned, really needs uh, x-rays and there are a number of changes that you'll see on the x-ray, uh, including new bits of bone formation around the joints, you know, swelling of the joints uh, and changes to the bone next to the joints. Um, and often these changes can be quite easy to see. But the question uh, for many cats is if the if 
uh, mobility problems is the main issue they've come in with really can we justify sedating the cat to get this data or do we think in this let's say 17 year old cat really that based on the information we have from everything else that it is actually very likely this cat has got arthritis and let's move straight into management but um, certainly with older cats that are having any investigations of other problems I always try and include a few joints in the x-rays so that I've got that data as well. So moving on to treatment, I mentioned at the start there's a lot we can do to help cats and it really involves multiple approaches, so a multimodal approach. We're not just going to do one thing, we're going to do lots of things and really helpful things include actually just looking at the cat's environment, um, essentially making their life uh, more comfortable in whatever way we can think of making it comfortable, a bit like you might uh, have uh, a... Um, uh, healthcare professional assess your uh, elderly relatives home to make sure that there were handles to hold on to the, the uh, uh, up the stairs and on the walls um, and that uh, there were perhaps ramps instead of steps it's the same sort of attitude we're just trying to look at the environment through the cat's eyes through the arthritic cat's eyes and think what can we do that will help painkillers can definitely be extremely helpful for arthritis and there are some uh, veterinary licensed painkillers that are very effective and typically also very very safe uh, to use long term in cats as well so they are uh, I think often a, a very popular choice there are some alternative therapies um, acupuncture where we don't really have much uh, data to absolutely support it but uh, as is the case in people there definitely are individual cats that do very well with acupuncture and so I think on an individual basis that can be useful uh, similarly laser therapy some some people will do that and find that helpful as well weight control if your cat's overweight is definitely important to reduce the pressure on their joints um, and beyond that we want to encourage still continued movement so play is is good um, consider dietary changes in in terms of joint support and also joint supplements less data again that's published on these in cats um, there is some data for mobility diets um, some really nice data in fact uh, one of the royal canon studies um, about 13 years ago so prior to um, most people or many people getting fitbits and the like to monitor their own activity a royal canon study actually put accelerometers onto cats so they could monitor their step count and the cats with arthritis then received either a standard diet or or their special arthritis diet and they were able to show that the cats receiving the arthritis diet were more active they took more steps a day which is really nice sort of study to do uh, in some cases surgery is helpful but for the most part because this is a condition that affects multiple joints it's not really a surgical issue so starting with the environment, um, I, as I've already said, it's really looking at your environment through your cat's eyes, trying to work out, well, how can I make their life as comfortable as possible? How can I make sure they've got all the amenities that they need, whether that's food, water, comfortable bed, litter box, and it's not a struggle to get to them? Um, can I also encourage a little bit of play and activity as well um, and really support them as best as possible? Um, this comment at the bottom really just re thinking of the cats with the toileting accidents which we talked about a few weeks ago at a session um, that can become a little bit of a, a learnt behavior to some extent in some cats it can be quite difficult to um, to resolve even if you resolve the, the cause of it so that's that can remain a bit of a challenge but following the strategies that I talked about in that session as well as today hopefully will give you the best chance of resolving that so little easy things you can do might include um, for a bed um, having a pillow um, on the floor and in this case the pillow had a heated pad on it which was a plug-in heated pad which could be left on 24 hours a day then a nice fleecy blanket next to the radiator so that when the central heating is on it's even more toasty warm but the rest of the time it's still warm and it's a walk-on walk-off bed so really easy uh, for even very severely mobility impaired cats very easy to do 
Raising food bowls and water bowls is useful because crouching down to eat and drink can be quite painful if you've got sore elbows and shoulders. So if we lift up the food bowl, uh, that can make eating and drinking more comfortable. And there are some beautiful um, uh, models available uh, online and, and in pet stores, um, but also you can just empty your kitchen cupboard. So get a, a plastic bowl out of the kitchen cupboard, turn it upside down and, and put a bowl on top and your cat will still say thank you very much. Steps to favourite places can be useful and there are steps that you can buy online from places like Amazon. They often have a picture of a dog next to them so uh, perhaps uh, uh, more thinking of them but definitely can be used with cats. You probably will need to train the cat a little bit to, uh, to see the steps and maybe having some little treats to encourage them to have the confidence to try them out. Um, some people also are incredibly handy and actually one of my clients once uh, made me uh, or made my cat some steps uh, which sadly I don't have anymore and I didn't take a photo of which was um, very frustrating but here's another homemade example that you can see and then the cat can now still get up on the bed which it loved going on to. So there are lots of uh, simple things like this that can be used uh, to support cats. Litter box. Now the ideal litter box for a cat with arthritis is firstly that it has a litter box close to where it spends time and ideally that the access point to that litter box is low so it's not difficult for the cat to step in and out of which is why I'm showing the picture of the the white litter box on the left hand side but the litter inside that litter box would definitely not be my choice uh, because that hard uh, uh, compressed uh, wood pellets uh, is quite uncomfortable to stand on I would think for a cat with sore joints and what is much better is the sandy consistency cat litter as shown in the example in the middle and on the right and these lovely pictures are, are from Ada Mayer. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly uh, just received them today and couldn't resist putting a couple of photos in and this is a, a litter box that she has created um, and smoothed the edges using an iron so don't worry about looking at those edges thinking they, they might be sharp but basically turned a plastic box into a a litter box and you could uh, I think ni neither of the cats have arthritis but for an arthritic cat you could of course make the access point even lower but you've got a nice um, uh, sandy consistency litter within that and it's still actually compared to most litter boxes on the market particularly if you're looking at big litter boxes has a low entry point so, so that's great. If your cat has a cat flap then they may find using that difficult as we've already mentioned so you may find that either you need to get used to opening the door more for the cat or that they probably aren't going to outside, go outside quite as much if using a cat flap is, is painful. Encouraging play, um, catnip toys if your cat likes catnip, um, just dangling a ribbon, uh, tying a rib, long ribbon to your belt so that the while you're perhaps uh, moving around the house the cat has something to, to look at and perhaps chase after if you're not moving too quickly. Um, laser pointers also can be fun for the cat although with the laser pointer play always try and give them a little reward if they catch the spot so that it's not frustrating for them to sort of catch the spot and then there's, there's nothing there uh, to give them a, a reward at the end of it. And then beyond the environmental modifications, next thing on our hit list of possibilities would include painkillers. And uh, as I've already mentioned, there are some veterinary authorised painkillers for long term treatment of pain in cats. And these are often very well tolerated and very effective. So whilst no medication is free from risk and free from the possibility of side effects, if used appropriately, um, these medications are absolutely brilliant uh, in terms of supporting cats with arthritis that are in pain. If for any reason your cat doesn't tolerate one of these standard veterinary authorised painkillers, then there are other options that are not veterinary licensed. So we're using them what we call off licence, but with discussion with you. And that includes painkillers that are used uh, in people like gabapentin. We do sometimes use that in cats, sometimes tramadol um, and also buprenorphine, which is a, an opiate uh, painkiller. So there are there are other options, but the main licensed ones uh, are the these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories um, and there are a, a number of different options available uh, also in different formulations liquid versus tablet to suit different cats and for the most part I would say they're very well tolerated um, and even actually if your cat 
does have kidney disease, it doesn't rule out using these products. Uh, you do need to be more careful, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't completely block it as an option. Uh, but of course, careful discussion with your vet and related to your individual cat for that situation. And a key thing really with the, the non-steroidals is making sure that your cat is well when they're receiving them and they're eating and drinking normally and they're not dehydrated. And these concerns definitely are amplified if you have a cat with kidney disease. So whilst, as I've already said, they definitely can be used in many cats with kidney disease very safely and absolutely, I would say, life-savingly because they restore quality of life to a cat that's uh, perhaps in a, a really severe amount of pain um, but you do obviously need to, to use them carefully and, and talk with your vets about the possibility of side effects if, if that uh, is a concern for your cat. Therapeutic diets, I've already briefly mentioned that Royal Canin study with the accelerometers on cats, but actually most of the big diet companies have got mobility diets and some companies have got mobility diets that combine with other uh, common problems in older cats. And a good example of that would be Hills actually have a um, KD, which is a kidney diet plus mobility diet. So that is a really nice uh, possibility to have available um, for your older cat that may have both arthritis and uh, kidney disease. Uh, Royal Canin also have a similar diet in their senior consult stage two range, which is uh, also aims to cover both of those bases. So there are some really good diets out there. And there are some studies that have shown or have indicated that cats receiving these diets are helped a little. So whilst it, it, in a very severely affected cat, probably on its own diet is not going to be enough to, uh, to really make them feel comfortable, they probably will need painkillers as well the diets actually definitely are, I think can add uh, a lot of benefit to, to those individual cases and there are supplements you can give separately um, uh, but uh, that are similar to these the diets in terms of um, the same sorts of compounds that you use for all of these it can the other key thing is it can take a few weeks for you to see the benefits so if your cat likes the food which is always the first step with any change in diet try and keep with it keep on it for four to six weeks before deciding that perhaps it's it's not worth it Joint supplements, uh, so I briefly mentioned just now that these are all the, the um, uh, glycosamina, glycan, chondroitin uh, supplements that are available for cats, dogs and people. There is some data, I think, in people, but definitely in dogs, that these can be helpful and can reduce the amount of painkiller that is needed. Um, but I don't think we've got good studies in cats that show that at this point, but there's certainly no harm in using them. Um, the main uh, difficulty with them, I find, is often uh, acceptance long term so even the really palatable versions cat might take it for maybe a month or two and then there comes a point where perhaps it doesn't just doesn't seem as exciting as as uh, as it should do so they are definitely worth a try um, and uh, they may help so in summary, um, osteoarthritis is a very common problem in cats, um, but don't worry about it in the sense of uh, keep an eye out for changes in your cats. Uh, and bear in mind, hopefully, the tips that have been talked about in this session in terms of how you can perhaps make your house disability cat friendly. So perhaps uh, having if your cat likes to be on the sofa, maybe getting a stool or something by the sofa that breaks the jump. So it makes it a little bit easier for them to get there or making comfortable beds at floor height, making sure they have a litter box, all those sorts of things we've talked about. Um, and of course, talk to your vet and discuss whether further treatments uh, might be helpful, such as um, joint supplements, diet changes, painkillers uh, and other things. But there is a lot that we can do to improve quality of life in even very severely affected uh, cases that the cat on the right hand side, um, ginger and white cat, is a patient of mine who was really in very severe pain and had lost a lot of weight. And he had kidney disease as well as arthritis. And within six weeks of starting painkillers and also receiving the, the um, KD mobility diet, which is because it's a kidney diet, high in fat, which is good if you've lost weight, he'd put on about 10% of his body 
body weight so gained about 10 percent body weight which is absolutely brilliant so uh, and in fact this picture was taken of him on the work surface in his owner's kitchen and his owner said he couldn't remember but it was years since he'd done that so this was the, the evidence if you like of him feeling a new cat so it really it is possible to restore quality of life for, for most cats affected by arthritis so um, as usual there are other resources on the website I mentioned that uh, senior health care health uh, questionnaire uh, earlier on with the mobility questions um, but there's also the the elderly cat book that uh, I've mentioned in previous sessions as well um, and finally this will just be my opportunity to tell you about next week's session which is talking about another common old cat problem which is cognitive dysfunction syndrome the cat equivalent of Alzheimer's disease so I'll look forward to um, sharing information with you on that topic next week but in the meantime thank you very much for joining me today